In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Polar Pacer Pro. What is up, guys, and welcome to 40 Runs. Now, the guys at Polar are pretty awesome, and they sent us two watches to review. Now, they sent us the Polar Pacer and the Polar Pacer Pro. Now, Toby came round and took the Polar Pacer Pro and left me with the Polar Pacer. So he's been out running around with the Polar Pacer Pro huh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and I thought it'd be cool, actually, to catch up with him. Uh, we've got a long run plan, so I thought it'd be actually cool to catch up with him and, uh, and just find out how he's been getting on with the watch. Now, before we get into that, just a quick couple of things. Uh, like I said, the, the watches were sent to us uh, by Polar, but we're not getting paid by Polar. Um, and there's no script, as you'll see from this video. Um, also, I think it's interesting, before we get out uh, and catch up with Toby, the watch is £260 on startfitness.co.uk. You can use the code 40 runs, get 10% off, but uh, I don't get paid a cent from that. Uh, I think the other interesting things are these sort of new features on it. Uh, I wrote them down, actually. Let's just quickly go through it before we get out there. So we've got now, on this watch, we've got added uh, bar barometric uh, altimeter. We've got a faster processor, more memory, new clearer uh, screen display. We've got added wrist-based running power. We've got added hill splitter. We've got added route nav navigation. We've got added uh, Strava Life segments. Uh, they've also put on performance tests uh, for walking, running, cycling, uh, shift strap accessory cap capability, compass uh, during um, activity workout, smartphone notifications. Uh, they've increased the GPS battery life from um, uh, 235 hours from 30, and they've increased the water um, waterproof inspect to 50 meters from 30 meters. Okay, right, so that's, I think, uh, the basics, very basic, uh, but I think that the key to this video and the key to the, the watch reviews in general is how uh, we find them when we're obviously using them properly, right? So we're not just sitting here talking about them. So that's why I wanted to get out and find out how Toby's been getting on with it. And the best place to do that is while we're out on that long run. So that's it. Over to Tobe on today's long run. Okay, so we're out here with Speedgoat. He's been playing with the Pacer Pro, like I said at the start. Um, right, so Tobe. What was, watch was you using before the Pacer Pro? Uh, Felix X Garmin. Okay, right, so, how have you found the Pacer Pro, which, what, I'll tell you what, let's do it this easier. What are your likes? I'm not, not a fair comparison, to be fair. I like how small it is. Yeah. Quite like my wrist, on the wrist. On the wrist as well. <laughs> which obviously the Felix is quite a big in Garmin. Yeah, yeah, it's range, a big so. old lamb, isn't it? Um, quite easy to use. Yeah. Um, unless you've got gloves on. Oh really? Yeah, the buttons aren't as proud as on a Garmin. Okay. I've got gloves on. Is it touch screen? No. Okay. How uh, have you found that? Uh, I don't mind. The problem is I've been trying to get used to the buttons because it's a different configuration. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, once you work it out, it's all right. But so, yeah, because they're, they're not proud, Yeah. you end up just pressing multiple buttons. What else you like? Um, I like the way you can configure the screens. You can do it on the computer. Yeah. Pull your data screens, yeah. Rather than the Garmin trying to go through it on the watch. And oh, do you like the app? The app I like the data it gives you on your home screen. Right. Gives you a good overview of your day. Yeah. Um, when you dive into it, I mean, I haven't really got too far into it. No. But I, don't know, I think it's a bit harder than Garmin the way it's laid out. So. Okay. What about the battery life? How do you like the battery life? Is, uh, I've been charging it about once a week, so... Oh, it's not too bad. No, it's not disastrous. The Phoenix uh, does go longer. Does it? Yeah. Okay. And what about... The, oh, navigation. Do you like the navigation? No. Okay, right, so... <laughs> Let's go on to dislikes. Okay, right, so dislikes. Navigation, obviously, it's just said it. Why don't you like the nav? Um, so unless I'm doing something really wrong, possible, it kind of shows you a line on the screen. And that's it? But there's no map. Really? Underneath it. Right. So you can follow a line, but if you're running around somewhere, you don't exactly know if you're on the right road. Uh, I, uh, let us know in the comments whether that's just speed goat setting up wrong. But again, it's real test, people. It's real life testing here. And if he can't work it out, and he's like the brain's trust compared to us a lot. Oh, hang on, the train. But if he can't work it out, there's not much hope for any of us, really. So, the nav you don't like, what else don't you like? Um, I don't like the way it works with my tripod. 
Oh, right, why's that? It doesn't give you as much information as the Garmin does. Right, okay. So there's an extra app you can get for the Garmin. Yeah. Which is free on the Garmin IQ store, whatever they call it. So compatibility wise, it's not brilliant. Yeah, not with the tripod. I mean, they do do their own version of tripod. Oh, well, that's probably what it is, Joe. Whether that's better. Um, yeah, they probably do. It's because they do their own version. So the Garmin, to be fair. Do they? Yeah, I'm not sure you can develop apps for Polar because the app was developed by Stride. Right. And it's a bit like the app store for Garmin, you know. Okay. Um, so that's a bit annoying. I can't see as much data right. as I can on the Garmin. Okay, all right. So any other dislikes before we wrap it up? Buttons. Oh, you still don't like it? You still, still got don't it. like the buttons. Yeah, why is that? They just don't stick out enough. Yeah, they don't stick out. And look, you seem to have to hold the button over it to sink. I noticed that even on the cheap, on, on the cheap one, I noticed that you have to hold them down. It's really annoying. It's like it doesn't auto sync when it's near your phone. No. Even though you've got Bluetooth connected. Yeah, how was your Bluetooth, by the way? Mine wasn't brilliant. It just vibrates. Yeah. It doesn't tell you anything. Yeah. It just sits there and vibrates. No idea what it's trying to do. No idea what it's trying to do. Okay. It comes up on the screen. Really? All right, I'll tell you what. Let's wrap it up. So, rate your Garmin, your Fenix, out of 10. Eight. Yeah, no, my right, why? Uh, I quite like it, it does everything I need, everything I've got. Probably just degrade it a bit because it's a bit big. Okay, right, so, it's given it's gone. All right, there's a massive price difference, yeah? yeah. But, eight. What would you give the Polar Pro? Five. A five? Yeah. Really, not that, not that keen? Yeah, I mean, other... Yeah, not really. No? No. <laughs> I mean, it, it does the basics. But, but I, just, I just don't know the way it works. There we go, right? So look, I don't look. I think to be sort of balanced, it's not. You're not. He's not saying it's a bad watch. No. He's not saying that at all. And there's stuff that he likes. It's just that uh, I, I found it with the normal one, Toe. Yeah. It sounds a bit harsh or polar. It's not meant to be, but it's almost like it's five years behind the tech. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm saying. I think the caveat you put in as well. We're, we're used to Garmin. Yeah, work. exactly. Yeah, right, so. yeah, exactly. Right, and I, I liked it, the the cheap one. I just thought it did the basics well. Yeah. But I just thought the tech was a little bit older, right? Yeah. Going out for a run. Yeah. But you got to remember, your Garmin is top end compared to that, yeah, right? Exactly. So I think, would you recommend it? Because you've also run in Coros. We've had him in Coros. We've had him in Garmin's. Would you recommend it over the Coros watches? Yeah, from what I'm of the Coros, that was really confusing. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of Coros, uh, mainly because they only look after elite runners. You've got to be a certain size and a certain speed, but no, that's a separate conversation for another day. But I just generally don't like the Coros compared to the Polar. I just, me personally, liked the user experience of the Polar versus the chorus and you think the same though yeah definitely i definitely yeah i'll say garmin polar chorus yeah rank them. yeah but uh, look garmin's not for everyone so i i was i reckon wrap it up i reckon these two watches right is worth a look if you're not into garmin and maybe you can get these cheaper yeah yeah then it's probably worth a look but i would say if you're going from garmin to polar you might struggle. Fair play? Yeah, it's a big learning curve. Yeah. Okay, all right, well, that's it. Honest as always, probably too honest. But there we go, let's speak. Oh, it's probably going to carry on wearing that because, well, it's just, you like wearing stuff new tech, doesn't it? So, try it out. yeah, he's just trying it out. All right, guys, so that's it from us. We better concentrate. Look at, I've got these two up there, look. Men be running easy. We're doing 9.5, but oh, I don't know what they're doing. Right, say bye, guys. Bye. We'll catch you later.